Again, I'm already pre-sizing my hackle. Saves a little bit of time. Tie it in on the side. And then you want to kind of lay on the thread. Tie all those tips down along with your, your hackle barbs to hold it there. Your hackle stem, I mean. And then what I want to do for a post, a lot of people will take their thread and wrap up a post to build a base to wrap the hackle around. Uh, with, with deer hair that's as coarse as this is, uh, there's no need to. Um, it, if you wrap up first, cleaning a little bit of the stem, you can kind of see I've cleaned the stem off of this piece of hackle. If you clean that off, you can wrap up the stem and work your way down uh, your post. So you, so you don't need to uh, put a thread base on it. If you're working with something like calf tail or something that's going to fold over easy, uh, you may need a thread base so your hackle doesn't slide off the top. So what I'm going to do is pull this post straight up and then I'm going to bring my hackle around and grab with my left hand and kind of work, work the hackle up on an angle and get it to where I want it. Then I'm going to grab some of these barbs and I can kind of move it up or down depending on where I want it and set it in there. And then grab the pulse and just pull on your hackle really gently. It's going to flare those tips and set your hackle. And then, you're, then you can start bringing it down, each wrap going underneath itself. Every now and then grab that pulse and tighten it up. Pulling on your hackle, tightening those up. I put quite a few wraps on these depending on how good your hackle is. If you've got really good hackle that's got that's uh, pretty thick and has a lot of good barbs on it, then you're not going to need to put as many wraps on. And then go almost, don't come around with your thread because you don't want to catch all these barbs in there. You, you want to kind of come ar around underneath in a circle this way, catching just above the eye of the hook and your hackle tip. And come up from underneath and snip that off. Then you can do a half hitch if you don't want to fold this back. I know a lot of people use a half hitch so they don't ruin that. Um, I, I again like like a whip finish, so I just grab everything and pull it all back, making room for my for my knot. And then tightening that down. You can kind of see how things are tilted back, so I'm just going to give it a little tug back, put it in place, flip it over grab some head cement and just put one little dab of thin head cement and that should work its way down into the post and into the hackle and you'll be all set. And that's a Robert Drake with a deer hair body and a deer hair post. Uh, again, I want to touch on using the right deer hair for the fly you've chosen to tie. Um, that Robert's Drake I just tied, I want to have a very short tip and light uh, that's meant to imitate, uh, you know, lighter colored mayflies. You can tie it. You can get like dark brown deer hair and tie, you know, a larger bug for brown drakes and change up the colors and all that stuff. But for the one I was tying, I wanted a really light body. So, and it was a relatively smaller fly, so I needed light, short tips to this. Uh, this barely has any black on the tips of these, on the tips of this hair, whereas a, a regular white tail has a relatively long black tip, and then a lighter section, and then even another darker section before it gets to this gray. And I'm going to kind of draw out the difference between the two hair. The coastal deer hair has a short tip and a sh very short black section to it. There's a little tiny black wispy hair that comes out the tip. And it's got a little bit of a white section right here, a light section, and really no dark area in between until it gets to this, the meatier part of the hair which is all gray. The regular white tail has long has longer gray section to it, quite a bit longer tips, and a really long wispy black 
black uh, hair off the top. Uh, a lighter section and then another darker section in here. So when I go to tie this Robert Drake, if I use a really long dark tipped deer hair, when I tie this in right here, and my deer hair is sprawled out and I cut that off, it's going to be it's going to come back here and if my tip started right about here as if I was using a dark haired a dark haired deer hair or a dark tipped deer hair and I was tied in right here in the back that was that sprawling out this section of the fly would be darker than what I want whereas if my tip is really light like in that coastal deer hair I was showing and it starts right about here only this part would be a different color than what I wanted and the rest of this would be fine but if, if my tip is longer than what my sh my uh, shank of my hook is or if I'm doing a smaller fly and I have a short shank and my tip is really long a lot of that fly is going to end up being the color of the tip instead of the color of the actual deer hair that I wanted um, so that's why you need to, to pick the right deer hair for the job um, and if you have any questions on that or if I didn't explain this in, in a detailed way or, or some way you can understand again uh, shoot any questions to me I'll be happy to try to explain that better but um, that's why you can't use a really long tip deer hair the last little tip I want to put on here is uh, kind of for equipment I showed in a couple of different uh, places where I just shear deer hair off instead of snipping it and um, that involves a relatively sharp pair of scissors. Uh, these anvils are uh, great scissors. They almost have a bit of a serration to them. If you look really closely, the the uh, the blades have a have kind of a, a groove to them. Um, but a lot of the other scissors, uh, you, you can't shear stuff off like that. But um, doing that much deer hair, they do get dull really quickly. Uh, and I notice you can do this with other scissors as well. But just take a steel from your butcher block and just run those down there a few times on each side and that's all it takes and it makes those scissors cut like brand new uh, just just turning that edge back over um, you know I, I've had people almost throw scissors away because they weren't very sharp but just a, a regular old steel out of a butcher block will, uh, will make those cut like brand new and it'll help with shearing that deer hair off well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you picked up something you can use. Uh, like I said before, the next video is going to be doing extended bodies using deer hair. Uh, we just didn't get to it during this video. This one took up a little bit more time, and I tried to cover things a little bit more thoroughly. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at jamie at fullersnblc.com, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.